my name is Tyler Morrison, and this is a proof of 1.2 for Math 23A. Part 1 is to define countably infinite. Countably infinite simply means that there exists a bijection from the set in question with the set of the natural numbers 0, 1, 2, etc. <coughs> Part 2 is to prove that the rational numbers as represented by infinite decimals are countably infinite. So we can take the rational numbers and list them diagonally by putting the numerators across the top and the denominators down the side as 1, 2, 3, and so on, and 1, 2, 3, and so on. And give them each a serial number, q sub one of the numbers from the set of the natural numbers, <coughs> such as q naught equals 1 over 1, and then begin counting diagonally so that q1 equals 1 over 2, q2 equals 2 over 1, Q3 equals 1 over 3, and then Q4 would not be 2 over 2, because 2 over 2, when put in simplest form, is the same thing as Q not 1 over 1. So at those points at which the fraction is not in lowest terms, we can simply write an X or something of that sort. And then continue on, Q4 equals 3 over 1. Now this set has created a bijection from the uh, <coughs> natural numbers given here as the subscripts of the Q's to the rational numbers um, represented in their fractional forms. And it is injective because each Q sub i is only used once. And say if you have two Q sub i and Q sub j, such that i does not equal j, then the two numbers that are mapped to are not going to be equivalent. And it is surjective because each rational number gets a serial number, so to speak, Q sub i. Thus, because it is injective and surjective, <coughs> the uh, mapping here is bijective. So the rational numbers are countably infinite. Part three of this proof. <coughs> is to prove that the real numbers are uncountably infinite. They are, they are not like the rational numbers. So in order to do this, we will assume that they are countably infinite and that we've already created a mapping such as this one in which we have a naught, a1, a2, a3, and so on. And each one of them is going to map to an infinite decimal of sorts. And we're going to just lift them as this. And we can really pick any numbers here because, you know, supposedly all the real numbers should be on this list at some point. Okay, so here's our example list. Once you've devised a list like this, you can pick out every number on the diagonal of the list and make a yourself a new decimal. in which you change each one of the numbers following a certain rule. Say in this case, the, uh, the digit equals the digit up here minus 2. So we have 3 minus 2, we'll give it 0 0.1. 1 minus 2 is negative 1, but in this case 9. 3 minus 2 is 1, and 9 minus 2 is 7. And we we'll continue on like this as we continue down the list of the real numbers. Thus, we have created a number that differs in 
the digit of the subscript <coughs> by some amount. So if we claim that this number is already on the list, we just look to the each digit and see that it differs by every number in at least one digit since we've changed the digit of every number at least once. Thus, we have created a decimal that is not on our list and the real numbers are therefore uncountably